welcome to Seattle. Hello and welcome to Seattle. Today we are doing the much anticipated Seattle travel guide. I know a bunch of you guys are coming here during the summer, so we wanted to make sure that you guys knew all of our favorite places to go to. I'm here with Dr. Kevin, who today's actually a Monday, but it's a holiday, so Kevin has most of the day off. He's on backup calls, so we're gonna keep our fingers crossed that nothing crazy happens. We wanna make this the most efficient for y'all. We I don't think we can go to all the places that we like in one day. We'll just maybe talk about some of them, mm -hmm. and then that way you guys don't have to like watch the whole video. You can just get the highlights. Actually, we want you to watch all the videos. <laughs> Goods. We got the masks for us too. It smells so good. Okay, can you do the reveal? Ta da! Woo! Look at that. Chive cheese biscuits. Okay, first of all, today we're each only ordering like one thing per place. Otherwise, we're not gonna be able to eat it all. A trick to morsel is that there's always a ton of people. So on the weekdays, you can actually order online and pick up, and that's really helpful. This is our choice for a breakfast. Like we like something that you like grab and go, and it's like easy and not too expensive. But if you're looking for a more fancier brunch place, then you can definitely head to Portage Bay Cafe. There, yeah, there are two locations. I would just check in with both of them because their waiting line times can be different for each one. They're pretty close to each other. Honestly, they both taste really good, so I don't think one is better than the other, mm -hmm. but we're gonna enjoy this. I'm so excited for this. I dream about this biscuit often. Mickey loves biscuits, and this place's biscuits is probably the thickest and the mm -hmm. most flavorful biscuits. So we've been in Seattle for two years now, and this is, I've been here once, this is my second time coming. Although we did take canoes out on South Lake Union and you can see way. like South Lake Union, from South Lake Union, you can like row all the way to we did. Gas Works Park. That's we what did. I'm trying to explain yeah. to you, so we man. we came here twice. All right, so this used to be a, I think they made gas here. I don't know, it's called Gas Works Park. There's like all these like gas looking machinery things here in the little park. I didn't even realize that. That's so cool. <laughs> Are we having a fight? I call Kevin the hunchback of Notre Dame because he always is like slumped over. But what did you say? What did you say? Hunchback of Seattle. You know what? Okay, you guys wanted to know about driving etiquette in Seattle. And I would say, if you've ever driven in San Francisco, like downtown Seattle is pretty hilly. Um, it's not too far off. And you can make a left if you are on, if you are- On a one on, way and you need to make a left onto a one way, you can yes, make a left without then, the light. Yes, <laughs> which I did not know that when I first moved here and it was very confusing. The speed limit is like enforced here. So you know how like the speed limit in California is 65 on the highway, but like everybody drives 80. The speed limit here I think is 60 and everybody drives 55. So if you drive much faster, like it will be very obvious. Just in the city city. Yeah. There's a mix of people who are very hesitant so nothing happens and then there are people who are aggressive. Yes, there are a lot of people who do not use their horns when they should. And then a lot of people who use their horns when, when they, they should. probably shouldn't. Which side am I in? I'm in. This. Kevin uses a horn for like no good reason. I'm like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> but it's like a friendly honk. It's like a beep. Whoop. You know? I have the biggest tip for you guys. Okay. When you are parallel parking in Seattle, this is the biggest tip I can give you. It you can park. How do I explain this? Like you can park whichever direction even if it's the wrong side of the street for parallel parking. I mean, you can park on the left side of the street 
Yes, like you'll get really confused because you'll see cars parked on the wrong side and you'll be like, oh, is this a one-way street? But it's not. They're just parked on the wrong side and that's okay. We are here at the... We are here at the Ballard Blocks. The and Salmon so, Ladder. I would say this is like one of my top favorite attractions. Like there, you can see the seals, you can see jellyfish, you can see salmon, if you come Boats. during the right time of the year. And we'll pop the little graphic for like the best times to come. It's also very um, Seattle-like, you know, it's... It's not something that you see in but a lot But sometimes of you come and you don't see anything, so <laughs> it just really depends. So on the way to the locks, you can actually walk through, actually you have to walk it's through botanical this garden. botanical garden. So it's this like really nice nature-y experience. I think I was really surprised when I moved to Seattle how green everything is. There's a very beautiful visitor center that teaches you about salmon and all this stuff if you're interested. Oh, you can add your name to the salmon legacy wall. How much do you have Are to you donate? Interested? I don't Are you have interested? the money. Are you interested? Are you interested? No, thank you. I'm too famous for you. Like let's go, let's go. I think we have to go soon. No, it's fine. We haven't even lowered the water yet. <laughs> no, I haven't even... Okay, can you explain the water level situation? So this side is like the Lake Washington, like the lake side, the freshwater side. Okay. And this way is out to sea to the Puget, Puget Sound and the Pacific mm -hmm. Ocean. I call it the and Puget there, Sound. The water levels are different. So in order for the boats to go from one side to the other side, here is the locks and like you have to take a series of elevators down like water elevators so like lower the water for you or raise the water for you to get there or also be like a huge like avalanche of water here so the people want to know does it actually rain every day in seattle what should they prepare for just wear layers it does a lot of times I would say it rains a little almost every single day, so bring like a rain jacket or a coat. It's not raining like all the day, all the time, but it's you just- It's not like big rain. Oh, uh, debatable. You just have to have it ready. Um, if you're wondering what the best time of the year to travel here is, I would definitely say July. after July 4th to uh, mid-September-ish. We have June gloom here, so it's usually pretty gloomy in June, so it'll be kind of a hit or miss. But if you don't mind the gloomy weather, I don't think June's a bad time. We In order weren't. to get the best view, you must climb the mountains. Hi, I yeah. turned on the cloudy filter. This is so exciting. We're here at the lovely Cary Park. I mean, it's not a bad viewpoint. There's plenty of parking and stuff. But um, bring some food or something. It'll literally take you like 30 seconds. So, Pie Place Chowder is Seattle's best clam chowder. Honestly, it's the best clam chowder I've ever had in my life, so I highly recommend. The issue is that anytime you go to Pie Place Chowder, there's literally a line of over like 50 people waiting outside. What they don't know is that you watch Mickey Rise videos, and all you have to do is go to the Yelp app and place an order. You're gonna go order, takeout, or delivery, and then do takeout, Click, make sure you click the right one because there's two. So the post ally one, and then do you want the large or should we just get a little one? A little one is fine. Okay. Huh? The New England clam chowder is the best one. They have a flight that you can try, but I'm not gonna lie, like the classic one is the best one. We just placed the order and we're gonna go and pick it up and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to get it. You're gonna be able to bypass this entire line. Parking at Pike Place is kind of actually hard. There's a lot of street parking, but you'd have to walk a lot, so if you make sure you download pay to park so that it's easy to pay, pay by phone parking. it's called mm -hmm. pay by phone sorry pay by phone yeah but but you you know better you're gonna go get it. you feel so happy this whole thing. Okay, you're so happy when you do this is this tour called How to Do Seattle in Two Minutes? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna go to the front of the line. You guys have no other. You can walk in. You're gonna come back this way. You feel so proud to like. Literally takes you 30 seconds. Biggest tip I can give anyone in life.
So when you buy your chowder, it always comes with some sourdough bread. But you should also get the bread bowl. Oyster crackers. And then finally, this. They don't have a cup for us this time. LOL. What do you mean? It's so hot. This is the world's best clam chowder. Okay, so we are going to Tiger Sugar, which is a brand new brown sugar boba place that opened up in Seattle. New things open up every day here because it's so exciting, right? Yeah. Do you see it? Well, look, the opening has the flowers. Look. Are you happy? Yes! I'm gonna do the thing. Yeah. I'm gonna shake it. 15 seconds. My arm is kind of sore. Okay. That was in 15 You're seconds. You're gonna pierce it. Three, two, one. Whoa! Oh, Kevin! <laughs> it's really good. Wow. Isn't it good? Yeah, it's very sweet. I've never had tiger sugar and I would say it's low key, like one of the top, definitely top three bobas I've ever had. It's- The drink is really good. The boba itself is- I don't like that it's tiny boba. I don't know if they had the option for like no, bigger boba, so. but the drink is like, I, I hate it when it tastes super sugary. Like it still feels really light, but it's still sweet. Like, I don't know how they do that. You just like it tasting like milk. Mm -hmm. Maybe milk. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. Oh my god. Oh, thank Come you. on. <laughs> What's going on? They don't have the thing that we came here for. Sold out, sold out, sold out. Oh my god, what do we do? You want anything? We got the good. This is from Nana's Green Tea. Um, we love getting the swirl, but the matcha and the vanilla are both really, really great flavors. We're stuffed but for you guys. We'll do this, right? It's literally probably the best matcha I've ever had in my life. And they have locations in like Waikiki and stuff too. It is very delicious. I highly recommend the matcha soft serve latte, the matcha latte. The parfait is great. You have to get what's called warabi mochi. They were out of stock today. So. Mm. It's like literally like happiness in a cup. We love that for us. Can we talk about the places we didn't go to or like are we gonna put those in? So okay, so if you wanna go shopping, I highly recommend going to University Village. It's kind of like a Stanford shopping mall, outdoorsy vibes, but also like a higher, not like the highest end, like not no. luxury shopping, but like it is kind of like a nice plaza with like- Restoration hardware. Mm -hmm, and like cute Apple little store. boutique stores. And there's also a lot of food and stuff there, so it's a great place to hang out and they have parking, which is amazing. Fuji Bakery for Japanese bakery sweets, like for breakfast, um, for cheesecake, for tiramisu. Highly, highly recommend. There's more touristy things we didn't really include, like the Seattle... Um, the Space Needle. The Space Needle, the Chihuly uh, Glass Museum. Yes. That's like a package deal. Also like the library, the Seattle Central Library is really pretty. It's yes. like an architectural marvel. It's free. Except the parking isn't. It's free for 15 minutes. You can go there for 15 You can go there for 15 minutes. And then the Amazon Spears are pretty cool to check out. Highly recommend getting a hot tub boat in the spring or the fall time and get out on South Lake Union. It's honestly one of the coolest experiences. It is kind of pricey, so make sure that you get like a good group of people to go with so yeah, you guys can split the cost. Or you can just take a paddle board. Paddle boarding! At South Lake Union. At, uh, what's the place called? Agua Verde, like the dock? What's the yeah, dock Yeah, Agua Verde, the Portage Bay. <laughs> So we'll insert the name, but it's like next to the university and you can rent a paddle canoe, board, a paddle board. What else can you rent? I feel like there's actually a bunch of stuff that you can there's rent. There's also a lot of stuff like outside of Seattle that are like 
Yes. Seattle. Like for example, if you like to float, which it's my favorite summer activity to go to Fall City, you can rent floaties and you can tube for like two, three hours in just like lazy river. And the water's super cold and it's super hot out there. So it feels super duper nice. Make sure that you bring snacks and food so that you can take them with you onto the water. Our favorite hikes are that one we did was pretty, Lake 22. Lake 22, it's like an hour and a half away. But it's a beautiful hike and it actually ends with a lake at the like top, which is so cool. I'd never done one of those before. If you want to stay in the city though, there are some pretty good in the city hikes. There's a uh, Discovery Park. Not really is, a hike, it's more like a well, walk. It's, 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 it's nice, it's like two miles yes. and you can go to the beach and it's like a little foresty, it's mm -hmm. a nice place. Magnuson Park is also pretty nice. If you have a dog, Man Magnuson Park has an off-leash area that your it's dog- It's like a really big, it's like an off-leash hike. Yeah, like there's a whole trail for your dog and there's also um, a swimming area where all the little dogs go and swim. It's like the cutest little thing ever. And then there's like other, there's a lot of places that are like 45 minutes away near what's called Snoqualmie and mm -hmm. uh, Snoqualmie Falls that are that have a lot of good hikes kind of in the foothills of the Cascades. Oh yeah, like Rattlesnake is a very classic Seattle hike. Um, we didn't talk about any of the things on the Bellevue side, which is roughly like 10-15 minutes you have to cross a bridge, but that's where all the like really, really, really good Asian food and that's where all the Asian people live mostly because the school districts are really good. Um, so let us know if you enjoyed this video, if you want us to do a part two with all the stuff on that side. If you guys have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer as many of them as I can, or maybe I'll take your questions and answer them on Instagram stories and save that to a highlight so that you guys can take a look but if you don't already follow us on our socials make sure you follow both Kevin and myself on Instagram for your daily updates don't forget you are a 10 out of 10 and don't let anyone ever make you feel otherwise bye